he had a exceptionally large amount of these skinning knives and I asked him why he had all those and he laughed about that. John would get into these moves, you know, where he started talk and he'd get real weird and I just didn't want to talk to him anymore, you know. There was no like big switch or anything right. like that, you know? kind of a natural flow of conversation. Oh, he showed me that article in the paper about Carmen Halleck disappearing, you know, and that other girl. I knew Carmen Halleck. Did you ever date Carmen at all? Yeah. Two or three weeks, that's about all. Did you ever know Lee Hainline? That blonde girl, he showed her to me, you know, and said he really liked her a lot, you know, like he would never go up and ask her for a date or anything. He was, like, kind of restrained from doing that, but he really wanted to go over and ask you know, her out. Ever... This is the impression I got. He'd be sitting around his house and not, not, nothing else to think about. He'd think about her. Did he ever talk to you about going into law enforcement work at all? The last time I talked to him about that was uh, when he was working for Wackenhut, you know. And he said he was going into law enforcement from Wackenhut because he submitted this report and everybody thought it was great. Then I thought he was kind of nuts. You say John showed you or you saw the newspaper article when she disappeared and right. also... Uh, John showed it to me. Quantities. John showed it to me and uh, I said, boy, that's weird, you know. And so what I did was I called a restaurant and I said I was some credit agency to find out if they knew where she was. And uh, they said, no, she's, she just took off. And so I didn't know anything more about that. And then my mother had shown me this article about these. It must have been a second article in the paper about these two girls who were missing. He was going with a girl when we were rooming. She said that you didn't want me around that night. So I, I left and I came back and she wasn't there. And John made this big thing about telling me that they had had intercourse but she had been menstruating. And so there was blood all over the place. But I didn't ever see any blood. To, because he had cleaned it all up. And then after that, I asked her, well, where, where's that girl that you used to see? Oh, I just go to her house now, he used to say. But I never saw her after that. You know John when he was uh, friendly with or going with a, a crippled girl? Right, right. I knew that girl. Um, I can't think of her name. That's one of the reasons why I left. She left, and then I left. But that was one of the most disgusting parts of the whole thing. First of all, I couldn't figure out what the hell this girl who could not take care of herself at all was Always. doing living with us in this house quite a while, almost as long as I was living there. She had a friend, but it was real bad, you know, because she couldn't do anything for herself. Man, I didn't want any part. She slept with John. Never there was a girl he said he met in the library, and I, her father was a musician. But as far as that crippled girl goes, I was taking care of her. I didn't want to take care of her. But I was taking care of her. As far as I can see, the best thing for her to do was to move out. She had no business living on her own. I walked into this, and all of a sudden I was nursemaid and chauffeur and everything else. I wasn't, you know, ready for any of this. When I moved in with John, he had pills, man, and there were some people he knew doing marijuana. I had never done any of this stuff. And I walked into this. As a matter of fact, I had never lived, I had a roommate, you know, in that type of situation. I'd been in the Navy, you know, but this whole thing was kind of like new to me, and I was trying to learn it turn out to be a big bummer had you ever had sexual relations with this crippled girl while she was staying in the house yes yes i tell you how i tell you how it came about too you know like we were sitting in the uh, kitchen and all of a sudden she said you want some or something like that we were talking you know i figured she had a dress on you know but i didn't know whether to say yes or no and i figured well might as well say yes she was pretty intelligent they said in the paper that he had some poetry. She wrote some pretty good poetry. And I'll tell you what, personally, I thought she was pretty decent, you know, for what she had to put up with. She didn't have voluntary control over her limbs. Did you ever see any, uh, any teeth in John's possessions at all or anybody else? He had, he had some stuff that he said he had collected. It was, it was before I went in the service that he had shown me these little bones and everything. It was a long time ago. But you never recall him making any mention at all of Carmen Halleck having been chopped up and uh, disposed of at the city dump down there. Jesus, no. And you never made any such statement to John. Uh, what? What was what was my statement supposed to be? That she had been chopped up and disposed of at the city dump. That I said that to John? No. Oh, wow. This is turning into kind of a bummer, man. Did you know his first wife, Marty, at all? I met her a couple of times. What kind of a girl did she seem to be? Well, I think she would have turned out to be a pretty good wife if John didn't, you know, move into that slum he moved into and, uh, uh, and treated her halfway decent and didn't go hunting all the time and everything. She might have turned out to be a decent wife. She appeared to be a highly intellectual type girl. 
Oh yeah, yo. Were they living in the same house that you subsequently stayed in there for about three or four weeks? Well, they they had lived in that house, right? That's why he got the house originally. He was still living there after Marty had moved out. I, including my family, we all thought John was a little bit different. Uh, we didn't know why, but we figured that uh, this is the way I. If he was a little bit different, he had been doing a lot of things. Like I can't, I can't help but thinking that there wouldn't even have been a golf team at Aquinas if he didn't want to play golf, you know, that kind of a deal. And anything that he wanted to do, he could do, but it was always not something that was already going, you know, it was a new thing that they just started. I didn't know who his friends were. I, I assumed that his friends were in high school, people uh, are in his neighborhood, and not necessarily from school. Aside from uh, the one date that we doubled on in high school and, and the fact that I had moved in, you know, with him for three weeks or so, right? This was the uh, only real close contact. Like, I wasn't like his comrade.